This hack tip is brought to you by Midphase. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down the concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm your host, Darren Kitchen, and today we're dissecting wireless management frames. And as you guys know, we've covered the three types of wireless frames, management, control, and data. And last week, we went over one of the four types of management frames, the beacon. Today, we're going to be setting up an environment which will allow us to easily dissect a beacon frame, as well as the other types of management frames, probes, authentication, and association. So to recap our demo from last week, let's go ahead and begin by bringing up our network interface. If config WLAN zero up, and let's go ahead and also start in monitor mode with airmon ng start WLAN zero, and we'll put it on channel 11. And then using the tool MDK3, we can create beacon frames indicating our SSID of choice. So MDK3, and we're gonna use mon zero, we just created on channel with beacon mode on channel 11, and we're just gonna call it hack tip. That's our beacon of choice. And there we go. We're, you know, transmitting a bunch of beacons here, on various BSSIDs. And if we bring up an additional interface here, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now in a new tab, if config WLAN 5 up, we can go ahead and scan for nearby access points with IW list WLAN 5 uh, scan. And I'm gonna go ahead and grep, pipe that to grep and look for ESSID. And we can go ahead and see there are plenty of beacons. And of course, since we have random BSSIDs here, Hacktip shows up multiple times. Um, now this week, we're going to be using Airbase NG and Wireshark to put together a nice little wireless packet sniffing environment so that we can use it to better understand the management frames. So it's going to come back over here and stop MDK3. All right. Now, Airbase NG is a script that comes bundled with the Aircrack NG suite of tools. And like many of the Aircrack tools, it serves multiple purposes. This versatile little tool is mainly aimed at wireless clients or stations rather than the access points or base stations. And it can be used to do a wide array of wireless phishing attacks, allowing one to say, obtain WPA handshakes or web keys. It can also do all sorts of mayhem to access points and clients nearby. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it out there, use with caution. Now in today's example, we're going to be using the most simple function and that is just mimicking a wireless access point. You can find the full syntax of the tool by running, and let me clear this, um, by issuing airbase ng tac tac help. And um, you know, the only parameters that we're going to need to specify today though are going to be our channel and the ESSID. So let's go ahead and start that up with airbase ng and then tac c for the channel, and we're gonna put that on 11, tac e for the ESSID, and we're gonna call it hack tip again, and then our interface mon zero. And there we go. Now, the first thing that you're going to see when you're using Airbase NG in this mode is that it's going to report created tap interface AT0. See, every time Airbase NG is started, a tap interface is created. And, uh, you know, it isn't brought up by default, but we can actually come over into our other tab and do if config AT0 up, and then if config AT0 to go ahead and see all of its parameters. and. You know, there we go, we've got, uh, we've got our AT0 interface. Now the neat part about this interface is that even with web encryption enabled, the TAP interface will always show incoming packets after decryption. And you can also use this to send packets to this interface and they'll go out encrypted, say, if the TACW option is set. Now the next thing that's listed over here is that it says uh, trying to set up MTU uh, with 1500 and that's basically saying the maximum transmission unit um, or basically the biggest an IP packet can get before it splits it up into multiple packets. And you know for Ethernet version 2 the highest that you're going to see possible is 1500 though you may see MTUs all the way up to 9000 with jumbo frames on gigabit LAN. Anyway, finally, Airbase NG reports that an access point has been created and that it has the BSS ID of our NIC. Now we can actually specify a different BSS ID with the TAC A option or just simply use Mac changer beforehand. I know a lot of you guys are like, hey, you're giving all your Mac address. No bigs. All right. So now with the access point up, we're going to go ahead and fire up Wireshark, then start sniffing and analyze broadcast packets. And then we'll wrap this all up with this week's giveaway. But first, 
let's take a quick break. Midphase is offering Hacktip viewers web hosting with unlimited disk and bandwidth, 24-7 support, free web builders, simple CMS installs, and $100 worth of search engine credits from Yahoo and Google. Get six months of free hosting at midphase.com slash hack5. All right, we have our fake AP up with the SSID of Hacktip. So let's go ahead and copy the BSSID into our clipboard, and that's right here. Select that and Control Insert to copy that guy. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and start up Wireshark. So in another tab here, I'm gonna run Wireshark with an ampersand so that, that just runs in the background there. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and select the Mon Zero interface. So Capture and then Interfaces. And I see Mon Zero here, we've got some packets, so let's go ahead and start. All right, we've already captured a few packets, so let's stop. I only needed a, you know, just a second of this, right? So let's go ahead and apply a couple of filters to make this a little bit easier to look at. Now to add filters, just come up here to the filter area in the top left and go ahead and enter your expression. Now in this case, I only want to see frames to or from our BSSID, our hack point access point. So, or hack tip access point. Anyway, um, for that, what we're going to do is say wlan dot addr equals, and then shift insert to paste my uh, BSSID there. Okay, great. Now I'm also only interested in beacon frames. So let's go ahead and add a little bit here to the, uh, we'll put two ampersands to so say and. Uh, regular expression here, and we're just going to say wlan.fc.type underscore subtype. It already completes that for me. Oops, hit tab accidentally. Subtype, and then we want that to be 0x08. And that'll come into play here in just a second. All right, it filtered, not a whole lot different, but uh, basically the only thing we're looking at now are beacon frames from that BSS ID. So if we open up the first one here, we can see, let's see, open this guy up. Let's just make him a little bit bigger so we can get all into this. All right, we have everything expanded, so let's uh, spring this down just a bit. All right, so we can see right off the top, top that uh, it is subtype 0x08, or otherwise known as a beacon frame, and that it is set to the destination address of broadcast, or FF colon FF colon FF colon et cetera, right? That's meaning that it's being sent out for everyone to hear. And, you know, we have our source address, we have our sequence number. Wireshark also knows that it's a wireless management frame, obviously, it could filter it by that. So we can see under here, wireless management frame, let's get rid of this guy and expand that, and we can see we have our fixed parameters and tagged parameters, and within here, we will find uh, a whole bunch of capability information. So. For example, under the fixed parameters, we can see capability, information, and I don't know, for example, we say it doesn't support WEP. We don't have the TAC W option set, so no WEP there. It also doesn't support OFDM, which remember from previous hack tips on this subject. Um, now let's go ahead and go into our tagged parameter. We can see the SSID is set. It is set to hack tip. We see supported data rates of one, two, five and a half, 11, as well as extended ones, including 6, 9, 12, 18, 24, 36, 48, and 54. Yes, those are in fact your lucky lotto numbers, indicating that this is in fact an 802.11G wireless network. Of course, down here at the bottom, current channel is 11. So these are the kinds of things that you would find inside of a beacon frame that's necessary for an access point to advertise itself to the world and say, hey, come connect to me. <laughs> Now, uh, in next week, we're going to go even further into this and break down the process by which stations connect using this same kind of setup. But now, it's time for the giveaway. Last time I asked, what movie does the tool MDK3 get its name from? And the answer is Demolition Man with Murder, Death, Kill. Now this week, what I'd like to know was, what was Wireshark known as before May of 2006. Go ahead and answer in the comments to be randomly selected to go ahead and win the radio that I use here on Hacktip, right? Now, as always, of course, we value your feedback and we love your suggestions. So if you have a tip to share to me, or if you'd just like to let us know what you'd like to see here on the show next, email tips at hack5.org or just leave a little love in the comments. And be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. I'll be there reminding you to trust your Technolust. I'm a wireless access point. No, I'm a wireless access point. I'm a wireless access point. No, I'm a wireless access point.